Wow. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. And for those that are new, welcome to the channel. Uh, today's project has a little bit of a backstory. Um, last year in 2020, the theater in town, the Paramount Theater, was going to do a production of Kinky Boots on stage. Of course, it got postponed because of pandemic purposes, and so it got pushed off to this year, 2021. And the organizers of that production doing the art gallery portion asked if I want to do a piece of art for it, which of course I said yes. And I had about a year to think about it, and it came back this year. And uh, as you see from the YouTube tile, that I made a large set of lips out of screws, actually. Um, still kind of in the theme of the show, a little bit, but kind of my aesthetic as well. So this video is about how I make that uh, piece of art for the gallery. Let me show you how I got started. So I started my project in Adobe Illustrator and I made a basic canvas and a grid, uh, every quarter inch, I believe. And these red dots represent each screw that I'd be putting in every quarter inch. I did label and number the screws that were more difficult in the center of it around the uh, opening of the lips, just so I make sure I'm putting all the screws in the right spot. So when I get down to the shop, I know uh, positioning where each one needs to go and where one should not be included. This was helpful. It did take a long time to input all of this in, but uh, was definitely helpful in the end once I got down to the shop. So I ended up using three quarter inch plywood. This is actually some scrap left over from the dining room cabinet projects. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them here so you can see those. And I started off by gluing two of them together so that I have an inch and a half base to put the screws in. And I'll get into that a little bit later. For planning purposes, I found the center of the board and then I drew out four quadrants out from the center. And then I started laying out the grid on the uh, wood platform. This didn't take terribly long and I drew much more than I actually needed, but it was very helpful. My thinking on this was, I was worried that when I started drilling into the plywood that the top layer of the plywood veneer would split or crack as I was drilling into it. To reduce that from happening, I thought it'd be good to start a little pilot hole in each of the uh, areas where a screw needed to go. So I just took this little modified screwdriver into an awl and punched a hole where every screw needed to go. After a while, my hands started cramping up on holding the screwdriver handle, so I eventually turned to just putting the holes in manually. Since I don't have a CNC machine to drill all these holes, what I ended up doing was going to Harbor Freight and I found this package right here. And this size diameter drill bit is what I needed for the screws to be just big enough. So five, three seconds, so that was on right there. Trouble is that the, the router won't accept this quarter inch, um, you know, hex driver bit in the router collet. It's, it's just slightly too big. The bumps are slightly too big. Even though the router is a quarter inch collet and this is a quarter inch hex driver, the actual bumps make it a little larger. So what I ended up doing was taking this five three seconds bit and taking this and sanding off all of the edges to make this round and then that actually fit in the router collet. So this is what I use to drill all of the holes in the plywood. I can't find the five third seconds bit that I ground down here, but essentially what, what ended up happening is this ended up looking like this. I just rounded off all of the high spots on this driver to make it a round cylinder. And that's what the uh, router would accept as a quarter inch um, you know, bit within the collet. And I put that bit into the router and started drilling. I had the router on a very, very low speed to try and reduce the amount of that splintering happening on the veneer layer. And in the end, very, 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 very little uh, actually chipped out. So it, this method does work. It does take a long time and a CNC would be the perfect tool for this application, but I don't have one and this is what I have to do to get it done. Every now and then you'll see me blow out the dust with the air compressor, which was helpful. And here's some work on that. 
When all the holes were finished, I went back and lightly sanded the entire piece, um, knowing that I couldn't put any finish on it once the screws were in, so I wanted to finish it now. So I did some light sanding and then sprayed a light coat of polyurethane across the entire thing. And we're ready for screws. I got a few different sizes because I wanted some difference in the lips in terms of the height from the top to the bottom. So I went with these sizes here. I also think I had a two and a half inch that I'm not showing here. And for the very first screw, I got out my little square from DFM Toolworks to get that first one absolutely perfect. I didn't do that on every screw. I did it on a lot of screws to make sure I was staying uh, perfectly vertical to the table. And it looks good. The double layer of plywood is helpful at this stage. If I had just one layer of plywood down there, I'd only have about three quarters of an inch to get a screw in which might hold it, but it might be a little wobbly. And so the two layers really ensures that you can drive the screws in deeper to get a nice solid connection into the wood base. I wanted to add a little more contour to the lips. You can kind of see here that the screws are basically at these kind of levels, and I wanted to smooth the levels out a little more to make it a little more wavy, I guess, when you look at it. So I took my little gauge around and just started uh, modifying the heights of some of the screws. The ones near the edges are a little lower. The ones in the middle are higher to kind of replicate actual lips and the contour of lips, and it definitely helped. The next step I wanted to do was get the top of these red. So I found some old acrylic paint. I We've had this paint for, oh gosh, I don't know, 10, 15 years. It's super cheap. It's super thin, not a quality acrylic paint at all, but it did do the job of getting a base coat on these screws. And the next step, I wanted some more sparkle to this. So I found some nail polish at the store, Ruby Pumps it's called, and went around and added a little bit of this nail polish on the top of each screw head. This actually works surprisingly well. And thinking about what nail polish is, the consistency of it is good for this kind of application. It doesn't really run all that well. And it's a nice protective coat on the top of the screw head, so I'm not too worried about it chipping off. Both the acrylic step and this step is an exercise in patience, but I was happy with the result. To finish this off, I needed to make a frame for this entire piece, so I went and bought some of that pre-finished white trim from the store and painted it black uh, to help cover up the plywood edge. You can see in the upper right hand corner of the screen that we still see the edge of the plywood there. So this flat trim covers around the edge, and then I added this, uh, I think a chair rail, just to make a nice decorative border on the top. I painted this black originally. And then afterwards, I wasn't happy with that. And so I went back and added some gray texture, make it look like steel or stone. Uh, you can kind of see the background here uh, to give it a little bit more texture. The black was just too black to me. And to hang this, I got some pretty hefty hardware because uh, it's probably coming in and close to 50, 60 pounds all said and done. It's, it's, pre it's pretty heavy. 
I did end up having to reposition these hooks once we got into the gallery space and put them closer to the actual top of the frame versus where they are right now. But you can see here that this does work and it does hold up to my, my test here. And it is done. And it's delivery day. It was a beautiful day. Jump over to the Paramount Theater in Aurora. And there's the poster for the show. And here it is hung up. Special thanks to Javi and Jen for their patience and work in getting this piece here because it was a little unruly compared to the rest of them. And there's also some really nice, fun artwork here from some really talented people. It turned out really well, and I do think having a CNC to do all that drilling would be super helpful. But if you don't have one, you can still achieve an effect like this. And I think the the grid makes this look better than if it was just kind of haphazardly put in. Special thanks to the Paramount Theater for having this gallery available and to Javi and Jen, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone watching. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.